Abba Unicorn here with Abba and Preach on Trans Women. This is a video that was done by YouTubers Abba and Preach that has gotten over 2 million views on YouTube and I think that their work is very important. Uh, first and foremost, because I've noticed that trans women tend to heed the voices of biological men more so than biological women. For us as biological women, there tends to be quite a bit of pushback. Whereas for these men, you'll see less and less. Like in my comments, I have somebody called a hoe with hope who likes to call me, who likes to misgender me as trans because I'm an Amazon woman. And um, a few other people, Miss Miss Mac, uh, shout out to you guys, um, who like to do that. And my thing is, you, you can see the hip hop because if we misgender trans women, we are bigoted and hateful and transphobes. But if you misgender me, you are what? Just a troll? There is no label to throw on you with which you can be blacklisted the way there is for women, should we misgender? And these people come to my video and try to misgender me a lot. And I don't know if they think they're doing something new, but I've been this big, this buff, this athletic. I was five, nine at 10 years old. So every RuPaul joke, every drag queen, every transgender, it has already been made. And um, like it or not, I identify my body structure as um, as an elite form of womanhood. I'm, I'm right up there with, if I wanted to train, I'm right up there with the Williams sisters, uh, Serena and Venus Williams. And um, you only prove my point as a feminine African-American woman, why it is so important to push back against people who were saying trans women and biological women are the same. I am a woman, you are a trans woman. And in order to have fairness in sports, we must hand in hand carve you out your own lane. Serena Williams said it in this video. They've got footage of her saying very clearly, you know, male tennis is just a different sport. Like she, if she went up against, Serena is the goat, okay? The greatest of all time when it comes to women's tennis. But if she were to go up against the the 300th tennis male tennis player, ranked number 300 in the league, she would lose and lose bad, maybe in six minutes. Look, gender is a spectrum. Sex is fixed. Every trans woman is going to have a toe tag when she dies that says male. There's nothing we can do about it. And telling us we're delusional is to gaslight us. And that is one of the most insidious forms of abuse. And I would hope that the just among trans women would also take up this mantle and provide pushback within their own community. Black women are highly masculinized and stereotyped as manly or as men. And we suffer for it in a similar way that trans women suffer for it. And we're trying to differentiate ourselves from that. And that is our own struggle. But when you throw yourselves on top of ours, I mean, that is, that is a truly, truly tone deaf, lack of compassion, lack of empathy, lack of, I mean, look, like I said, trans women have a lot of pushback for women like me. So I'm hoping that, um, because one of the things that they feel, they're like, oh, you're jealous of us. And you know, we're better women than you. And heterosexual men want us more than that. Well, here are the voices of heterosexual men that I hope um, you find beneficial. And again, this video has got over 2 million views. I've got a smaller channel. However, um, it seems that for most trans women, their target demographic of men is heterosexual black men. So I wanted to share this because I thought that this was so good. Their responses, their righteous indignation, their faces, like just, just everything about their response is incredibly witty, incredibly moral and sound balanced. So with that being said, uh, let's, 
got to do this again uh, because apparently Rachel McKinnon, who is a, a trans cyclist, as you what has won yet another um, competition. What, as you understand it, is their problem with you competing? I'm legally and medically female, but the people who oppose. No, stop, 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 stop. She's legally and med medically female. It does not mean she's biologically female. She's still biologically male. Okay. Oh, see? She's yeah. very careful. Ah, thank you. Okay. Medically just means that on your paperwork, it's Okay. It. But the people who oppose my existence still want to think of me as male. Think of me as male. Now, if you hear the language there, he says people who want, like, like people who want to oppose my existence. And I know me as a woman, I, I most certainly don't want to, I have no opposition to your existence. And to be honest, because of who I am, being black, being female, the things that I believe in, in terms of uh, uh, spirituality, there are plenty of people who oppose my very existence. So for for you to say that there are people who oppose your existence first of all i can empathize on a very deep level but people who are trying to you're saying that people who are trying to erect fairness in sports in women's sports that you are trying to destroy people who are trying to erect and protect female sports because they're trying to do that and that alone, you're saying they oppose your existence. So you're weaponizing transphobia. When the people making these rules, I mean, who are they? They could very well have trans women as girlfriends, as wives, as confidants, as paramours. Like, we don't know. Just because they're trying to protect and preserve a tradition of female-only sports. You have weaponized transphobia against them in hopes of having them blacklisted and destroyed, and that's just unjust. A transgender man is a female who identifies as a man. Yeah. Okay. A transgender woman is a male who identifies as a woman. We have to understand the difference between sex and gender. Gender is a spectrum, okay? People uh, show traits of femininity, androgynous. That's in regards more to, towards characteristic behaviors. Sex is a matter of biology. You know, it's about your gonads. It's about your chromosomes. These are things that are generally immutable, meaning you cannot change them. That means that a male no matter how much they transition, will never become a female. You can't change your chromosomes, you can't change your internal organs, a lot of this stuff aren't mutable. Your femaleness, okay, the fact that you're female isn't based off of any paper or what a legal person says, it's based off your biology. Right. You can say you're a female all you want. Ladies, if you went on a date with a dude and he said he was 6'3 and you show up and he's 5'2 and you'd be like, you're not 6'3 like you said. Wow. And he's like, well, my paperwork, my paperwork says six three. It's a matter of biology. It doesn't matter what the paperwork says. The reality is still the reality. And so there's this stereotype that men are always stronger than women. And so if you think of trans women as men, then you think there's an unfair advantage. Again, very careful with language. There's this idea that all men are stronger than women. Nobody no. has said that. No. No, again, if I get in the ring with Ronda Rousey, she's going to have her way with my butt. <laughs> She will. She's going to tear into my butt butt. She is. She's going to do what? She's going to tear into my butt butt. Why oh, would she do that? Because she can. Because she's stronger <laughs> than me. Because she can. Because she's going to have it. <laughs> Ronda Rousey about to get rowdy up in my butt butt. <laughs> Why are you so happy about that? Some niggas are rowdy rowdy. I'm Ronda Ronda. <laughs> Ah, I'm pretty sure some of us are gonna hear that. It's gonna be a, a rousey, a rousey. <laughs> <laughs> oh wow, I hate myself for that. So this idea that trained athletes feel feel like it's fair for them to compete, that there's no biological difference. And so I said, cool. But I also have a question: Why is it always transgender transgender females who are always winning and breaking these records? Why isn't it men? So here. We have this article from Pig News that says 10 transgender athletes explain why it's fair to compete. So first up, we have Rachel McKinnon, 
a two-time world champion trans cyclist. Uh, she's been competing against women. Let's go to the next person. Transgender triathlete Chris Mosier. He is a transgender man, meaning he was born a female, transitioned to man. He has won absolutely nothing. So that's one for women, zero, zero for men. Man. Transgender fighter, MMA fighter Fallon Fox, who is has a record of six and one, including uh, uh, most of wins by TKO knockouts in the first round. On the other side, we have a transgender man, meaning born a female, transitioned to man, Pat Manuel, who made history in 2008 when he became the first transgender man to professionally box. What's his record? 1-0. He's oh. only had one fight. Who did he fight? A fighter who was 0-7. Never won a fight. Laurel Hubbard, who has won a few gold medals and beaten competitions as well as competed in the Commonwealth Games. She's broken records. Of course. And then we have transgender swimmer, Bailar, he a transgender male, meaning born a female, transitioned to man, um, was a winner up until 2012, transitioned, and then never won anything ever again. Then we have transgender wrestler Mac Banks, who was oh, yeah. born a, a female, transitioned to man, and he has won the high school state wrestling championship in 2017, 2018. So this is the first transgender man who's won something at a high level only problem is he's competing against women while on testosterone so we have a biological female on testosterone competing against women and annihilated the competition even when they make their own articles have their best examples of biological female competing against biological males they never win anything they never compete at the highest level. They never show out in a real way. But notice that all the biological males who transition and compete against females they are win. breaking record. So if this is so fair, how come there aren't more transgender men winning? Because it's not. That's the answer, because it's not. The answer is because it's not. Sport as a, as a human right. Just explain what that means for, for you. We care about the Olympics. We care about sport. It is central to society. So if you want to say, well, I believe you're a woman for all of society except this massive central part that is sport, then that's not fair. So fairness is the inclusion of trans women. Is it fair when someone who has a crazy physiological and biological advantage gets into So the thing that struck me there is where the trans um, woman athlete says, well, it's not fair to say we believe you're a woman for all of these other aspects of society except for sports. My thing is, but we don't believe you're a woman. We're practicing tolerance and respect here. We don't, we don't believe you're a woman. We believe you're a trans woman. That's its, that's its own category. Sex is fixed, male, female. Gender is not. In the middle of the gender spectrum, you have androgyny. That which you cannot tell, you know, is male or female, right? Um, th there, there is that. But it's like, we're not saying that we believe you are female or that you're a woman. We're just respecting what you want to be called because you have a right to, if you want me to call you a pig, I'm gonna call you a pig because it's just basic human decency. If you want me to call you a monster, if you want me to call you a toad, if you want me to call you doe a deer or a female deer, like I'm going to say it because I'm going to respect you. I was born into this world with a name, Chocolate Angel. I was a baby, I did not choose my name. But I feel highly disrespected when people say to me, to my face, they will not call me chocolate because they think my name is ridiculous or it's racist or it's whatever. I'm like, you call me by my name. Respect how I identify. Chocolate Angel is my identity. But there have been so many white people, white women especially, who just refused because it made them uncomfortable. I'm like, it makes me uncomfortable for you not to identify me as I am. And so with that compassion in mind, which this, this transgender athlete clearly is void of, with that compassion in mind, we say, if you wanna be called a woman, call you a woman. If you wanna be called she, if those are your pronouns, she, them, they, we, we say it to you. 
even though here's a double standard. We didn't do that for Rachel Dolezal. We didn't do that for Rachel Dolezal. Why? She doesn't have an entire LGBTQ community behind her. So we gave her all the pushback for saying she was a black woman, for identifying as a biracial woman. We, we gave her all the smoke. The smoke we would probably give you on the same level if it wasn't so that people, oh, you're a transphobe, oh, you're a homophobe, oh, you're bigoted, oh, you should, oh, we should blacklist you and you should never have a job again, you should never. No, that's not what we believe. That That's not who we are. We just say, this is not fair. You are not me. I am not you. White woman, you cannot identify as a black woman. That is not who you are. Trans woman, you cannot, like, you are not the same as biological women. It, 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 it's, it's, it's gaslighting. It, it's, it's gaslighting to tell somebody that reality is not real. Into a UFC ring and cracks the skull of a bio biologically female, not because the male is more talented, but because the male is stronger, faster, and better built for fighting sports. Ask any athlete if they want to compete against males, and they all tell you no. It's not because they don't work hard enough, because I would never insult female athletes that way. It's because they understand that there is a biological difference between them and their male counterparts. So when you sit there and you say it's unfair to me to not let me, I'm like, no, it is unfair to let you participate in that sport. Do you think you'd have been a world champion cyclist if, if you hadn't transitioned? I don't think I am a world champion because I'm a trans woman. I put in the work. Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? This woman asked you a simple question and you going off left and right. Who are you talking to? <laughs> What's wrong, bro? You good? You like that? Yeah, it looked like me. Yeah. <laughs> I'm sorry. You can just, I was like, oh shit, that's me. Hey, you inspired me. <laughs> yeah. Don't it feel good though? Do it again. Who are you talking to? <laughs> Telling me to feel it again. Who, Who are, are you, you talking, talking to? to? Put your hands in this shit. <laughs> it's more in the shoulders. <laughs> Who are you talking to? This girl's bugging, yo. Yeah, but she's bugging, but she's not answering the question. You can admit the fact that you work hard and also admit the fact that you have a huge advantage because you, you're a male. Yeah, you still, Both of those things can be true. And you can still, yeah, you can, you can still work hard. And again, we have to remember, I lose most of my races. I've lost against the specific cis women complaining about me being unfair. Yes, you... A regular male who trains hard lost against the top level athlete females. It's because you're not that good. Because if you were, you'd compete against males and you would get destroyed. The men's 100 meter record is 9.58 seconds. The women's is, is 10.49 seconds. There is an undisputable advantage for, for men in sport, isn't there? We talk about men being faster than women. We have to be very careful what we're talking about. So the example you gave was, was uh, the, this is a tactic to rewrite all of her questions and, and to reroute all of her questions so that he can answer it, so that she can answer a different question. Right. Which is what you compete at, you goddamn goober. <laughs> Who are you talking to? Did you not just win a competition and a gold medal? Who are you talking to? Who are you talking to? At the highest level, yes, where you compete. <laughs> you mad man, what's wrong, bro? She's out here trying to, you know, pretend she's righteous when you are being disingenuous. Yeah. So when we look at the very best athletes in men and women, you see this roughly 10 to 12% gap. But if we're talking about like the average Man, no, but, that's but when not we're true. talking about the IOC, we're talking about the elite level, aren't we? Of course. If you look within a single sex event, the difference between first and eighth is very large. And the difference between first and first between sexes is often smaller than the difference between first and eighth within a sex. What are you talking about? Red herring, where are you what going with you this? Saying, Why saying? didn't you answer the question? How, how does that even, that, that, that's not even a point. And no, the top, the top man and the top woman 
There's a gap. There's a huge gap. Even the eighth man and immense. the first one. There's a reason why Serena Williams lost to the 200th ranked man. It's not because Serena Williams doesn't work hard or she's super talented or she isn't the best at her sport. It's because men just have a physical advantage. It's a different sport. Period. Men's tennis and women's tennis are completely almost two separate sports. So I'm like, if I were to play Andy Murray, I would lose 6 0 6 0 in five to six minutes, maybe 10 minutes. Because, it's not, no, it's it, true. It's honestly, true. It's a completely, really. it's a completely different sport. The men are a lot faster and me, and um, they, they get, they serve harder, they hit harder. It's just a different game. And I love to play women's tennis. And I, I only want to play girls because I don't want to be embarrassed. I would not do the tour. So by that logic, 